How's everybody doing? And welcome back to the once in one build of New York City in City Skylines. I'm I Think You Know, and before we address the timer in the top left corner, let's talk about what we're going to be building in today's episode. Uh, the previous episode, we looked at the Brooklyn Bridge and that part of the city, and people voted below in the comments and decided that we wanted to build out more of the grid next. And I couldn't agree more. So today we'll be building the Lower East Side, Soho, Nolita, and Chinatown, and probably a couple other bits as well. Uh, in New York, deciding on what is what neighborhood and what isn't is very nebulous. Uh, all the neighborhoods in New York are unofficial, and people will constantly argue about which street is the border, northwest, southeast, whatever, of each neighborhood. Uh, but the first neighborhood we'll look at today is the Lower East Side. And the reason why I've put that timer in here is because for this part of the build, I recorded for one hour straight, no breaks and very little camera movement. And that was just really to challenge myself. And then when speeding that up five times in the time lapse, that works out to being 12 minutes, uh, which you'll be seeing here first, followed by some additional time lapse to show uh, building out the FDR and the rest of the Lower East Side, which I didn't want to do so statically or rushed because it is a little bit more complicated. Let's first though talk about the Lower East Side and its three most important streets. The first of which, and I'll highlight here, is Bowery. Now, to be clear, this is just Bowery. It's not Bowery Street or Bowery Road or Bowery Avenue. Uh, when I used to live in Brooklyn and took the Jay-Z train in a lot and there's a stop, the Bowery stop, and the conductors would often say, you know, next stop, Bowery Street. And that always bothered me because it, it's just Bowery. And that word is actually an anglization of an old Dutch word meaning farm because this area used to be all farms before it was very much inhabited by people and became one of the densest neighborhoods in the city and the country and, and maybe even in the world at times. The next street I wanna mention is the street at close to the top of here that we've built, which I'll highlight now, which is Houston Street. And yes, that pronunciation is correct. It is not Houston Street, it is Houston Street. Uh, the street in New York is named after William Houston, while the city in Texas is named after Sam Houston. So that's uh, th probably the most common shibboleth in New York. You can always tell who's a real New Yorker or not, whether uh, depending on whether or not they know how to pronounce that street. The third street here uh, is the one that you won't see being complete. We'll talk about that in a second, but is Delancey, and I'll highlight that here now. Uh, Delancey Street, named after James Delancey. Uh, is a major east-west thoroughfare and the reason why we're not building all of it today is because the very end of it connects to the Williamsburg Bridge and we will not be building the Williamsburg Bridge until we build Williamsburg in Brooklyn which I believe will be the first part of Brooklyn that we build together uh, and I'm really looking forward to that I, I love building in Brooklyn and uh, I know I've already had a few people comment and ask for it but we will get there eventually. The other thing I want to talk about about the Lower East Side before we move on to other parts of the city is how critical it is to the history of New York. As I mentioned briefly before, this is one of the densest neighborhoods in the city, and I'll put a little chart up here now. I wish I knew who to credit for this because I've just kind of seen it on Twitter a bunch, but it shows you today and in the past how dense the Lower East Side is. It used to be remarkably, incredibly dense, uh, full of tenement buildings, full of just far too many people uh, trying to make it in this city. And that's because the Lower East Side has really always been a neighborhood of immigrants, um, starting really in the 19th century with large numbers of Germans, Jews, Irish, Italians, and various other European ethnicities, and continuing on to the 20th century and today uh, with large numbers of Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, Chinese, and other uh, Asian nationalities. And that makes this neighborhood such a melting pot and such a microchasm of New York. And what I think, you know, America claims itself to be, although we don't always, uh, you know, meet that expectation as we laid out for ourselves. And this is a neighborhood that, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time in myself. There, there's a few parts of the neighborhood which are uh, really, there's an area called Hell Square, which is just like tons of bars and in pre-COVID times is just the noisiest, drunken, you know, sick on the sidewalk kind of places in the entire city. It's, it's a little bit extreme, uh, you know, but certainly when I was a bit younger, it was, a, it was a lot of fun to hang out around there. And, you know, unfortunately this is a neighborhood that's really gotten quite a bit gentrified over the years, is, is now 
incredibly expensive and not a neighborhood that a lot of New Yorkers can afford to live in, but of course, a neighborhood that so many still live in and have lived in for generations and continue to. Uh, and it's just a neighborhood that has a lot of character, a lot of life in it. And this will be one of the first areas that we focus on in an upcoming live stream. So I've mentioned that this video is all time-lapse. There is no live play in this video, although there is a really nice extra long cinematic at the end if you wanna see the city in all of its glory. But I will be scheduling a live stream, so if you were not already subscribed, please do so so you can see that. I'm hoping to have that be the weekend after this video releases, which will be either the 5th or 6th of February, that Saturday or Sunday, 2022. And I'm hoping to do a lot of live streams for this New York City build. I think it's a really good way to communicate with all of you and also to show you a bit more of the city, places you wanna see the most and, and to build out the residential and commercial areas uh, without having to have all the videos just be quick time-lapse uh, like you're seeing right now. Now, of course, as we continue to connect west, you'll see the camera start to shift here a little bit. And once you get west of Bowery, which again is, is this street you're seeing being built right now, uh, that is kind of the dividing line between the Lower East Side and the other neighbors to the west of it. Now, again, with the neighborhoods here being so nebulous, you what's directly to the west of it really, southwest of it is Chinatown. And Chinatown is sprawling. If you click on it on Google Maps, it actually overlaps some of the other neighborhoods around it because certainly parts of the Lower East Side are an extension of Chinatown. And the same could be said for other neighborhoods that surround it. What's really interesting to me is that the neighborhood above Chinatown is referred to as Nolita, north of Little Italy, with the irony there being that Little Italy itself barely exists anymore. Uh, it's really just Mulberry Street, uh, which is where you get the festival, the Feast of San Gennaro in the fall. And it's a real, still a really cool street and a good slice of New York history. But, you know, I think even a lot of Italians in New York will tell you that, you know, the real Little Italy is now up in the Bronx, uh, which we won't get to build. And I've seen that comment a little bit too from a lot of people that, oh, I wish you were building this part of the city or that part of the city. And I, I do too, you know, I really wish the, this custom map that I had was a little bit different, scaled just a little bit differently. Uh, but the reason that it is the way that it is is that I originally wanted to build LaGuardia Airport and wanted the city to have an airport. Uh, so that's why that part of Queens is still accessible in this particular map. Unfortunately, I will never be building an airport in this city when I've tried to build it in the past. It's just so far from everything that the game doesn't really handle it too well. And that's kind of strange because of course, if you've been following the City Skylands community, uh, very recently the airport's DLC was released. And while I'm always happy to see Paradox and Colossal Order continuing to support the game, releasing a new patch breaks all the mods. So the reason why I haven't scheduled that live stream yet is that a few of my mods are still not working quite right. The modding community has been absolutely wonderful in getting their mods up and running as quickly as possible. But, you know, of course, nothing's perfect and, you know, we gotta wait a little time for things to get done. And I think I'm pretty close to being there. Uh, I had a little bit of a freak out the day before the DLC released, worrying that uh, the network extensions was going to break. Because what I realized is it's the network extensions too that is allowing the Brooklyn Bridge to work. And without that, the Brooklyn Bridge does not show up anymore. And it's really important for me to have that be in this save, be in this city for the entirety of this build. It's just so iconic. It's such a cool looking asset. It had a title of its own episode and it, it deserves to be there indefinitely. So thankfully there was a new Network Extensions 3 release, which I need to check and see if it works in the same manner. But there basically just seems to be like a little bit of drama in the modding community. And I don't really want to comment on it too much because I don't know enough about it and I'm not involved in it certainly, but I just find it a little bit funny that uh, there could be so much dispute and disruption in, 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 in a video game. I mean, I, I know people take this seriously and put a lot of time into it. I certainly do, but in the end, it's just a game and we want to play it. We want to have fun. We want to all have a good time. All right, so you're seeing here continuing to build out some of these roads and this method is a little bit tricky, especially zoomed out, trying to give you this good view of this, this long time-lapse because a lot of these streets, when I built this for the first time, 
several years ago when I tried doing New York for the first time. I tried building all these roads full size and it just doesn't work. They're just all too close together. You can't get the angles right and it really looks terrible. But when you look at it on a map, if you look, if you go into Street View and you look at it, all these streets in the Lower East Side and some of these extend into Nolita and Chinatown as well, these north-south streets, they're really narrow. They're essentially, in New York at least, in the real city, is park cars on either side, one lane of traffic. In the game, that network doesn't necessarily exist or is certainly not one that I use, so we're going for those narrow roads. Uh, it's one lane of parking, one lane of traffic. But I think it really fits in well to keep the parked cars in the street and then shove the buildings in really close together. It gives this neighborhood a sense of scale that's going to be really quite different from the sense of scale you'll get in, for example, the East Village, which we'll do in a future episode. The East Village is the area directly north of the Lower East Side. And in truth, it actually used to be a part of the Lower East Side. It was all one neighborhood until really the 1960s when the East Village started to get its own identity and kind of stole its name from the West Village, which we're just building right to the edge of, right to the border of here. This is Sixth Avenue you're seeing being built uh, north-south here. And uh, the West Village is a little bit more complicated. There's a lot of streets there. There's a lot of subways and path stations that need to be hacked in there. So I'll probably save that for a little bit later. I'm not quite sure exactly yet when we will be getting to build some subways, but that'll happen eventually. I definitely like to know from you down below what you'd like to see next. I feel like I'm going to ask that probably every video, but when you're building something like New York and there are just so many options, you have to uh, you have to pick and choose. And I you know I want this to be a channel focused on its community and focused on you, the viewer who are watching. So uh, you know let's let's be in this together and and try to come to a conclusion of what we want to see and, and what's important to this build. But this is really just about the end of this first part of the time lapse, as this full hour expires. And look, it's it's I think it's quite a lot. I think it's a pretty decent build for an hour's worth of work. And we'll move swiftly now into building the area surrounding the FDR Drive. Now, this is a tough area because the FDR is tough in general because it, it's elevated and then it's at ground level. Then it's elevated again and then it's tiered over itself. It's all over the place, up and down the island. It's a terrible road I wish could get torn down a million times. But, you know, we're building this uh, to be New York as it is now, not in New York as I want it to be. And as I mentioned before, we're not building the Williamsburg Bridge here, but we are building the FDR that runs under it and the interchange that the FDR has with Houston Street. Unlike the Brooklyn Bridge, both the Manhattan and the Williamsburg Bridges do not have direct connections to the FDR. And that's a good thing. This building direct connections would have required so many buildings being torn down, so many lives being uprooted to make way for overpasses like they did for the Brooklyn Bridge. So. Kind of nice in New York where, yeah, if you want to get onto the Williamsburg Bridge, you got to get off on uh, onto Houston Street and loop your way around or get off on the next exit and loop your way around. And, uh, you know, certainly a little bit difficult and time consuming if you're trying to get somewhere in a car. But if you're trying to get somewhere in a car in New York and you're complaining about it, I don't know. You just should have taken the subway. I, I don't know what you want me to say. Next up here, we're going to be building, uh, I think this is Pike Street. I I'll fix that if I'm not right there, but... I originally built the higher part of it, which is Allen Street, as just a, a thick avenue, as you know, one of those 32 meter wide roads in the game. But for this section of it, it has a really, really wide medium, median, and the overall width of the road is like 40 meters or so. So I wanted to leave a little bit of a gap in there, which I will eventually decorate with trees. And um, certainly when we do the live stream, this will be a really fun area to build in. You'll like to see this, you'll like to see throughout this build that there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of places where it looks like I should be building roads, but I'm not. Uh, and that is usually because the Lower East Side, because it has this history of immigration and density, is full of a lot of housing complexes, a lot of housing projects, um, public housing or otherwise. But a lot of these areas will need to get filled in with large apartment blocks and then with different paths. So a lot of these things that look like roads are not roads. They might be paths. They might be pedestrian networks. We're gonna take a look at that when we build it for real, uh, but for right now, I think it it works well enough and then I can always fill in those little bits and pieces later as we need to. A little bit of this work also is a little bit slapdash. It's a little bit quick. It's not final for sure. And that's because I am going to need to put the Williamsburg Bridge in here eventually. And 
that's a little bit of a tricky build. It's like I said before, it's it's a really fun uh, aspect of, of this city to build, but it does take a lot of work and hacking in the subway in there and around it takes a lot of work and I'll be end up redoing some of these roads anyway. So if you're worried about it looking too final and not looking perfect, uh, you know, don't worry about it too much. We'll certainly come back to it in due time. And what else do we need to talk about here? So yeah, here's that part where we're gonna start looping around the FDR here. And this is a really interesting part of the city too in, in the modern day because that area in between where the FDR is and the water is, is actually a park, it's the East River Park. But for those of you who are following the news in New York, they're actually planning on tearing it down so that they can build flood resiliency efforts to combat the future of climate change. And while it is certainly important to prepare the city for future sea level rise, it's also been very controversial within the community in New York because instead of maybe taking another method like, I don't know, tearing down the FDR or building the flood embankments on the FDR, they're essentially tearing up the entire park, including uprooting a whole bunch of mature trees and then rebuilding it at a higher elevation to essentially act as a giant berm along that side of the city. And again, it's something that we need to do, but you do sometimes wonder in New York if there's a better solution there somewhere um, that could be more beneficial to all in the short term as well as the long term. And the final bit we'll be making here is the intersection between the FDR and Houston Street. Now, this is essentially like a half uh, traffic circle rotunda at an elevated area where the road runs underneath it. And again, this is gonna be real quick and dirty because I'm gonna definitely have to redo this in the future. Uh, but I wanted to get it functional for now so that cars can continue to take that FDR drive um, and then loop on the Houston Street to the extent of what we built. And as of right now, there's not really a lot of cars running around because we, our population's only at about 3,000 and change. Maybe we're, maybe we're close to 4,000, it keeps fluctuating a little bit. But when we do the live stream, we're going to massively expand. I, I'd like to see us in the live stream, maybe like kick it all the way up to 10,000 pretty quickly. I'd really like to get to a point where I build out a lot of the grid, we get a lot of people in the city, and then I start sticking the subway in, and then we start doing detailing, and then we just start doing more. Uh, and that's, I think is really important, but all in due time, there's just gonna be about a minute of footage here left, but please do stick around. There is a extended um, cinematic at the end of this, which I think really looks fantastic and puts a nice bow on this episode that I'm really happy with. The speed build was a lot of fun. Talking about the Lower East Side was great. And I really appreciate you all being here today. Thank you for sticking around if you've been here this long and we'll see you next time. Bye.